Hi, I'm Scott, and this is the Apple Max Smart Watch. Um, let me explain. It clearly says Apple Max, or maybe it's App LLP. I'm not really sure. It's a silly name for a product anyway, and it is a smart watch. And maybe it's hard to tell from this diagram, but uh, the proportions of it seem a bit off. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment when we open this up. So first, let's take a quick look at the specifications. It has a 2.88 inch TFT, which will give you an idea of the size, which is a 480 by 640 resolution, although it looks like it's wide. So it's probably 640 by 480, but either way, that's actually a decent resolution for something this size, though, as far as DPI goes. Uh, frequency GSM, WCDMA, so pretty much covers a lot of bands. Uh, battery is a 2300 milliamp hour polymer battery, which is pretty good. Um, the case size is listed right there in millimeters. And yeah, so uh, let's see what's inside of this thing. And the reason I bought this was not for my own personal use, but for this video specifically, because this piqued my interest when I was browsing Banggood one day. It was a nice little box, reasonably quality packaging. And what caught my eye about it was just the, well, weird proportions. The watch seems huge, and in fact, there it is. That's the watch face. Just to give you an idea of the size, here is a Moto 360 smartwatch, which is still a bit chunky, and, you know, it's, it's pretty old. Uh, but it's, yeah, you can see how that compares. And let's take a look at a fairly large men's watch by Citizen, which you can see is about the same height as far as the face goes, but this is far, far wider. So, let's see. Oh, the face piece comes separate from the rest of it. I'm assuming there's a band in here. Piece of foam. Ah, a sticker or, a, you know, a protective backing for the back, I guess. But how is it? It's not even adhesive. I don't get what this was for. Because there's already a protective cover on the front, which... Now let's get rid of that. Ooh, sexy. There, there was a box in the bottom of the box. And this contains a proprietary USB charging cable, which has some kind of magnetic looking thing on the side. Yep, seems to click right onto there. A screwdriver by the looks of it and that's because I saw on the side some screws and it said on the front when this was there to insert the sim chip up in this orientation so I'm guessing the sim slot requires the screwdriver to open which is I guess good if you're on a watch to make sure it doesn't pop out by accident so yeah not against that idea and then in this box I'm hoping we'll find the band which appears to also be quite huge. And not just the part that interfaces with, well, the face, but wow, that is one thick watch band. Uh, again, just for comparison's sake, this is sort of a normal-ish thickness of band. Yeah, that's about double the thickness, or double the width, anyway. As far as you know, thickness goes, it's nothing abnormal. And then a caddy, a holder for the watch, and some a bag on the end here to protect that metal. And this also has some adhesive protective backing on here. Okay, cool. Oh, it looks like some kind of sensor. Maybe it's blah. Well, I don't know what kind of sensor it is. Blood oxygen? Maybe? Maybe um, blood pressure? We'll find out. And I'm sussing out that it must go in this way because there's a camera on the side of it by all appearances and there's a little recess here in the band or in the caddy for the band which yeah it seems to click in nicely like that and uh yeah it's not going anywhere it seems pretty sturdy pretty secure and then i'm guessing this button is to release it yes now i do believe this thing is a phone also so i'm presuming you can take it off of there and then hold it up to your ear and actually speak into it, maybe? Like this? We'll find out. I do have a SIM card expressly for this purpose. It's just a prepaid SIM with hardly any um, minutes on it. 
but enough for demonstrating this device. Well, I guess there's nothing for it but to power it up. There's a button on the side, which I would assume is power, and there's also a front-facing camera right there. Cool. I'm going to hold it at a slight angle to keep the glare down. Lock mat? Yeah, lock mat. Intelligent and smart watch. A feu moment la terre. Still starting up. Oh! I only stuck my head in there so you could hear that lovely startup noise. Uh, this is quite the boot time. Well, there we go. Oh, it just went really dim. Did it just turn off? I think it timed out during its own boot cycle. Great. English, sure. Uh, okay. That was a little weird. Scan the QR code to download. I don't actually want to connect this to my phone. After skipping, you need to connect to your phone. Go to settings. Wonderful. Privacy statement. I'm just going to agree, which is kind of why I don't want to connect it to my phone because I have no idea what I'm agreeing to. Swipe left on the watch tray to the widget. This keeps getting dim really fast. Okay. Pull up to call out the notification center. Notification center. And pull down to call out the control center. Okay. Long press on the watch tray can change the watch tray. Cool. Swipe right, return to the previous. Okay. Press physical key to the watch tray. Cool. Man, this has a quick timeout. All right, well, there's the home screen. And, um, well, it times out in about three seconds, but it looks uh, shocking like what you find on the box. Nice. So any promises made by the box are correct. So let's swipe down from the top. Okay. Um, what is this? Settings? Okay, connect mobile phone, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, personal hotspot. So you can do a personal hotspot. That's nice. Mobile network, Q-tone display. Uh, sleep after eight seconds. Okay. For the purpose of the video especially, let's do five minutes. Oh, I see. Okay. Cool. It actually shows the face of the watch while controlling the dimming so you can really see how bright it's going to be. I like that. Mute notifications, airplane mode, S on a battery icon. Oh, extreme battery saving. Okay, cool. No, do not disturb. Low brightness. The phone is not connected. Okay. And double, WLAN closed or Wi-Fi. Well, there is an update, which it can't run yet because I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi. But you know what? Before we connect to the Wi-Fi, let's try putting in the SIM card. And I will use their screwdriver to open this up. Let's see if it's any good. Nope. Slides right off the screw head. Oh, these are really short screws, too. Okay, there we go. Yep. There's the SIM card slot. Looks like a nano SIM. Fortunately, this is a 3-in-1, which does have a nano SIM nested in there. And let me just follow the directions on the front. So chip up in this orientation. I have to push it in there. There we go. Clicked in nicely. Nice positive action. I'm not going to put the cover on it yet. Let's see if it actually works. That's weird. In the upper right-hand corner... Why is it timing out? In the upper right-hand corner is a battery meter. Now it says 96. I could have sworn it said 80 just a moment ago. Okay. Well, anyway. Let's see what we have. Whoops. The scroll is really fast. Uh, it's mobile network. Okay. So it's not showing any mobile data. Um, maybe because I put the SIM in. Let me reboot. Slide to reboot, I guess. Yep. Restart watch. Okay. Gotta wait for their nice robust boot cycle again. La terre, la terre, la terre, la terre, la terre. Why is it still timing out after like two seconds though? Um, okay. Oh, now it's got uh, mobile data indication. Yep. 3G. That's really tiny. I don't even know if on digital zoom that could be made out. But it says 3G next to the bars of service. And it just vibrated and went ba -doop -ba -doop. So I'm guessing... Oh, it did it again. Oh, notifications were on the bottom, I believe. 
Okay, notifications from H2O to refer a friend. Your carrier will send handset configuration. Let's look at a text message. Please use 1111. Okay. Cool. Okay, Google Play Store. Standard notification. Refer a friend. We're not going to do that. And then we got the full list of apps here. Wow, there's actually a bunch. Google Maps comes preloaded. I like that because it's actually handy to have maps on your watch. I pumped up the gain on the camera so my hands might look a little weirdly uh, overexposed, but it'll help see uh, help us see the screen a little better. So these are the apps that are included. There's an app called Wiz Files, QR code reader, some music app, web browser of nondescript type, alarm timer calendar, so that's heart rate. Okay, so I guess that's the sensors on the back are probably part of a heart rate monitoring system. Photos, that does not look like the Google Photos app, does it? And that's about it. Okay, and of course messaging. Let's see, it still says 3G, but let's see if we have any data service. Go to the browser. And, um, well, Facebook is on there. Web page not available. Internet disconnected. Okay, well, that may just be the mobile provider hasn't, uh, sent the configuration yet. I don't know for sure. But let me see if I can place a call. How about that? I mean, it is supposed to be a phone as well. And here's the phone that should receive that call. Thank you for choosing GSM prepaid wireless services, where you'll enjoy exclusive rewards with free bills. Okay. All right, so it is ringing. Nope. Oh. Yellow. Okay, well, it's speakerphone. And let's see. Okay, so I can hear myself on this, but does this not have a microphone? Uh, call volume is as loud as it can go. And if I hold it up here, I can barely hear it on here. Weird. But if I hold it like this, it comes through very low. Where is the mic anyway? I don't even know where the microphone is on this thing. Is the mic up here? No. Is the mic down here? No. Where the hell is the mic on? Oh. Ah, it's down here. Okay, so this little hole here appears to be the microphone. Okay, so kind of weird that my... Uh, <laughs> Prepaid phone provider here, which is H2O Wireless, decided to give me an ad before letting my call go through. I wonder if that happens every time. Hang on. Oh, no, you don't get an ad every time. Okay, the contacts app, I'm sure is nothing fancy. Name, phone, okay. Is that really all you can do is name and phone? Okay, it's not awful to type on this tiny keyboard, actually. Uh, no, I was trying to type 6969. Yeah, it was some getting used to. Yeah, I guess it's just name and phone number. That's not a real phone number, though. Don't worry. I mean, it's a real phone number. It's probably someone's. It's just not mine. Let's see what the camera's like. Okay, so right now it's seeing the lights that are in front of there, but um, let's see. What if I turn it around? Oop. All right. Well, there I am. It's, it's actually not the worst quality, at least as it appears on the screen. Tap screen to capture. Okay, it just took a picture. Let's uh, let's see what that picture looks like right now. Ah, okay. As of now, I have no idea what that looks like, but now you know. And what about the front-facing camera? Let me try snapping a picture of myself. This is a little awkward. Yep, I think you got it. Okay, and that's from the front-facing camera. It really doesn't look too bad. It looks like it exposed it properly, even with these lights in the background. Um, that's really not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be an awful quality picture, but this is uh, reasonable for such a tiny device. I mean, relatively tiny. It's not as tiny as like an Apple Watch or a proper smartwatch, but... Yeah, um, surprisingly nice. I'm sure the health app is BS. Yeah, you can do a run, walk, mountaineering, 
I'm not going to get into that. There's two health apps, though. This one looks like a pedometer and a timer and a calorie counter. But they both say health. Then there's a generic timer. Great. Calendar. Which I'm assuming would sync with your phone if you had your phone connected. And or any accounts if you had a supposed Google account connected. A uh, sound recorder, which I guess could be handy if it's literally on your hand. Wiz files, which is a file manager. So that's cool. You can see those pictures documents and so forth oh actually and it says wow i didn't check all the specs on this beforehand but 7.78 gigabytes out of 64 gigabytes are used it says 64 gigs of storage which also is not really that bad i mean you know nowadays you expect like a high-end phone would have at least 256 if not 512 gigs but for a watch 64 gig is not bad at all you can really have some decent music with you Okay, and maybe some videos too. I wonder if this will play videos. I'm going to have to load videos on here and test that. And let's see, does the Play Store work? I'm going to have to sign in. You don't have a network connection, right? Let's get, let's get on Wi-Fi. How about that? Let's see how simple that is. If I hold down the Wi-Fi symbol, it'll bring up the Wi-Fi settings. It does. We're going to connect to the test network. Then it brings up the password prompt. Uh, it does give you an option to see the whole password, though, which means careful typing. Obtaining IP address. Connected. Huzzah. Multitasking. Is that like a user switching? Oh. Ew, okay. Never mind, so I can just dismiss the app that way. Aha, uh -huh, that's how you access that. It's making beeps. It's, okay, sign into your Google account. Hang on. Actually, well, it's updating apps. Let me put the SIM card. Now, these screws are actually captive, so they're not just falling out, which is great because they're tiny and easily lost. And it looks like there is some kind of rubberized gasket on here. I'm not saying this is waterproof, but it may be water resistant. Okay, this screwdriver is not really fit for purpose. It keeps popping off the heads, but... Got it on there for the most part. Okay, so it's asking me if I want to add my phone number. That's this phone number. So, no. Good. I'm not signed into my actual Google account. By the way, I'm signed into a test. Not really a test account, but it's an account that I use for other purposes. Okay, not the fastest thing in the world. I mean, it might be doing a lot of stuff in the background right now. So I'm not going to hold it against that this is scrolling a little in a little bit of an iffy way. Okay, now it's getting a little smoother. Yeah, I think it was just busy in the background. It's not too bad. It's not... I, I expect this to be slow and, like, barely tolerable. Well, I can't click on the hamburger icon up there. Oh, there we go. Okay, a couple updates pending, including Android System Web View. So let me just update those. It's really hard to click, like, in the upper left, like, this back arrow... It's really hard to target that, but it's surprising the keyboard really wasn't too bad to use. I had very few mistypes when I was logging in, and I got my password right on the first try. Oh, the problem is, okay, so... Oh, I guess it did swipe out of it. Huh. Okay, let's see the notifications. One app updated, great. Now, as much as it pains me... Let's see if there's a wireless update available. Your device or software is up to date. Fantastic. I just wanted to make sure, and it says shake to check. Oh yeah, it's checking for updates. There's like a gesture type thing. That's interesting. Okay, and then just some uh, details about the hardware. So storage, we already know the 64 gigs, which is great. RAM, 4 gigs, which is, isn't terrible for a smartwatch, which is really just more of a phone that sits on your wrist. Former version is that, in case anyone was curious. Let's see what our SIM status is. Mobile data network type is HSPA. It's supposed to be LTE. Hmm. Yeah, it still only says 3G. I don't know if that's the dumb service provider or the actual watch, so I'm going to reboot it again. 
And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I spoke definitely way too soon. Um, I identified one of these as the microphone. Um, neither one is. Because these are actually the uh, interfaces for the watch's uh, latch mechanism. So like those interface with that. Yeah, I'm dumb. It just seemed like when I blew into it right there, I could hear it as if that was the mic. But the mic must just be somewhere else. Unless this is the mic and speaker, and it was just my breath happened to go across that. So my apologies for misleading you. Nope, still just 3G. I don't know, again, if that's the provider or if this just doesn't support the proper LTE bands for this provider. So um, not blaming the watch. Jury's still out on that. But it works great on Wi-Fi. Now let's check out the web browser. Um, I'm just going to go to Facebook, for example. Which still says web page not available. Connection refused. Now why is it not going to Facebook? Okay. Okay, let's just check out the browser real quick. Um, AliExpress is preloaded on there. Oh. Again, web page isn't available. LocalSearchTT.com BM index. Let's see if we can get uh, Chrome on this. In fact, it's kind of hard to click on the top of the screen in general. I mean, four gigs of RAM, it should run Chrome. I don't know what the CPU in this is. Let me do a quick investigation, and this is, if I found the information, it's on the screen now. If not, I'm probably showing a ridiculous picture or something else. Okay, not too long of an install time. No, weird, change the orientation. But welcome to Chrome. We will not help Google. Sorry, Google. Oh, wait. Can't click that. Oh, there we go. And there we go. Um, actually, I guess this is a better orientation because if I was wearing this on my wrist... Oh, no, that's actually a shitty orientation. Never mind. Yeah, if I had to... How would I get my wrist... Or, I'd have to get my wrist around like this in order to use this orientation. Will it change... I just uh no it doesn't seem to want to change orientations well that's not good yeah but as soon as I'm out of chrome it changes back to this orientation is there a chrome setting for that okay there may yet be but I'm just not seeing it offhand let's see if it'll play a YouTube video in chrome load up the YouTube homepage pretty quick Okay, a couple of mistypes trying to type my own screen name, or username. No, I have to watch my own ads? Shit. It's, uh, it's playing the video. Whoops. Full screen? Yeah, it's playing the video at like a proper frame rate. I mean, I, it may be dropping a couple of frames here and there, but it looks perfectly smooth. And while the video is playing, this I can hear it in the background still going. This is actually operating very smoothly. I just want to make sure this is as bright as it can go still. Okay, yeah, see notifications? Can't swipe up to get notifications while the video is playing full screen, though. Now, unfortunately, it keeps it switches back to portrait every time. Maybe that's just a Chrome thing. Maybe Firefox would be better. But let's see if I can swipe up to get notifications in here. No, it's just interacting with the browser. All right, so just double click. Oh, double click brings you back to home. Okay, great. It's good to know. Double click on the uh, hard button. And then, can you reconfigure these? Oh. Oh, okay. You can change uh, the home screen entirely, so you can get. That's cool. It's actually a nice watch face. No notifications. Even though it beeped a bunch of times. Okay, it's just scrolling through apps now. Okay. Classic, multifunction, which is kind of like heart monitoring and health, I guess. It has actually some interesting looking watch faces, too.
You know what? I'm starting to change my opinion of this. I thought this was going to be a goofy, silly, giant watch that was completely pointless and dumb and ran poorly. I, I, I honestly did not expect much out of this. But it has decent specs. It's operating pretty smoothly, even when playing video in the background. And, you know, I've had smartwatches before. I generally don't wear one anymore because I'm at home. I work from home nowadays, and I always have my phone right next to me. And um, since virus time started, I, I haven't left the house all that much. I mean, I leave the house, but just not uh, do anything crazy. So I haven't been wearing my smartwatch. But I always found with a smartwatch, it was very limited in what you can do on it. But th this is more like a full-fledged phone on your wrist, even if it's cumbersome. Let's see how cumbersome it actually is. I mean, it looks ridiculous. Like, people will probably make fun of you, if not to your face, then behind your back. But it reminds me of, of a dive watch. It's like more, it's proportioned similarly to that. In fact, the band is super long. Okay, so right off the bat, it's heavy. I mean, it's not heavy in a general sense, but it's heavy for a watch. So it's kind of, it's not like I have any trouble lifting my arm. I don't mean that. I mean, like, when I... When I turn my arm, like, I can just feel it, like, pulling on the skin. It's just, like, an odd sensation to have something that heavy on your wrist. But I, I guess you get used to it. And another thing is it does, like, impede your ability to move your wrist that way a little bit, but not too much. Like, if I go like that, the watch is sort of jamming into my hand a little bit, but and I can't. I could probably bend my arm farther than that, you know, if the watch wasn't there kind of like it. Is that weird? I kind of like having like a full-fledged smartphone sort of on my wrist, which it would work independently of a cell phone because it has its own SIM card. Not that other smartwatches don't have their own SIM cards, like the Apple Watch and many other watches are capable of communicating with the cellular network, but this is a full-fledged phone with a decent sized screen that you can actually type on. I mean, it's not great for typing. I wouldn't want to bang out a long email on it, but it's workable in a pinch. You just look ridiculous though, don't you? There's no way around that. People are going to be like, what is that guy wearing and why? And why is he out in public with it? But should people be that judgmental? I mean, what does it matter, right? Remember Glass from Google? Like everyone was all about making fun of that and being like, oh, people look ridiculous wearing that and it's so stupid. But I could see the practical angle of it. In fact, I think if it didn't have a camera on the front, it would have had less of a social stigma and maybe people would have been more accepting of it. Maybe. I don't hate this thing. Wow. And I was making fun of it. Um, I don't know if anyone else who watches my videos also watches Charlie, uh, Moist Critical, or Penguin Z Zero on YouTube. Russell, grab your hand, take your hand, go straight down. Yeah, see, there it is. There's the watch, or whatever you want to call this thing. On this ridiculous... He's not a bounty hunter. He's like a self-defense instructor slash fake policeman, allegedly, in my opinion. I don't want to get sued by the guy. I really don't know what he does outside of just what like was quickly mentioned in these videos. But, uh, but yeah, when I saw that video, I was like, oh, crap. I just bought that watch recently, and uh, I have it in my basement, and I really need to make a video about it. And uh, I'm going to make fun of it, because I'm going to make fun of that guy, too. But no. No, and, you know, maybe the guy's pretty cool, too. I, I don't even know. I, I don't know what to think anymore. And so as far as, like, if it's on your wrist and you want to use it as a phone, you push this button and to remove it. Yeah, I guess you could get used to doing that with one hand, because obviously you can't use the hand on which... Oh, wait, most people wear their watches on their left. Oh, Due to my being a lefty, I've misled everyone about the ergonomics of this thing. It's probably meant to be worn on this wrist, and therefore the part that sticks out will be sticking up your forearm rather than against your wrist. Man, I'm kind of slow. Well, I mean, I'm so used to wearing a watch on my right hand, on my right wrist, that why would I notice that? In fact, I'm even, I struggle to put on a watch on this wrist because I'm so not accustomed to doing it. Like, I just don't have the muscle memory. Wow, okay, so for proper demonstration, it should be on this wrist, and now 
of course, it doesn't interfere with the operation of the wrist at all. And in fact, it's far more comfortable. Yeah. So um, kind of sucks for us lefties because now I would have to use my right hand to control this, which is fine. I mean, I can obviously do that. I'm not that incompetent, but, uh, you know, it's just easier for me to type using my left hand. But if I bring up Chrome, so, oh, so now if I bring up Chrome, though, I don't have to bend my wrist in that ridiculous way. I can just sort of look at it like this, which isn't half bad. It's not really usable because it's a little hard to get your wrist perfectly straight. You know, it's more like this. But you can still read it, obviously. So, not bad. Clearly, though, it's meant to be used like this in this orientation. I still don't know what's up with their weird browser. Um... I think it was just those original links that were faulty, the pre-programmed links, because I typed in my own website, came up fine. It's a little slow loading the YouTube videos, but it does load them eventually. And there are a lot of YouTube videos embedded on this page, so I can't really blame it. For a tiny watch, it's doing a pretty good job. A uh, tiny watch, okay, tiny phone, I should say. Big watch. Big watch, tiny phone. Tiny ring! Tiny phone. Tiny rig. Tiny phone. Now maps is a good one because especially when you're walking, like when you're trying to find some place on a street, like while walking around a city, maps on your wrist can be really useful. So you don't have to have your phone out and occupying a hand. Uh, of course, you can use maps on a regular smartwatch, but this screen is higher resolution and bigger than most smartwatch screens. Although it is a little hard to do pinch to zoom on this tiny screen. Yeah, it's like, it's surprisingly responsive, though. I'm not getting much in the way of lag. Oh, maybe, oh, there's a little lag. I just spoke too soon. I guess I was trying to load all the streets and stuff when it's getting closer up. It's a little more bullshitty. Oh, my God. A little sensitive, too. Yeah, it's getting a little slow now. Take a look at Midtown. See if it loads the satellite maps well enough. It might have just been loading data in the background when it was getting laggy. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's still it's still a little laggy zooming in the satellite view, but better than I, still better than I would have expected. Okay, there's MSG. Well, that's a landmark. Nope. Why did it just exit? Did it just force quit itself? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it just decided to quit. I don't know if I hit something or what the deal with that was. Okay, well, I mean, you have full access to the Play Store, so ultimately this can do whatever your smartphone can do, as long as it doesn't require more than 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. Oh, I didn't try calling this. Let's see what happens uh, when I call this. What is it? What's the ringer like? What does it look like? Whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, this video wasn't as interesting, controversial, whatever, as I thought it would be. The device is actually pretty good. I mean, if you want to wear this on your wrist and walk around town, then do. I mean, it's really... I am sweating a lot under this band, though. This is just, like, some serious rubberized-type plastic. And uh, it doesn't breathe very well because it's so thick. It covers a lot of the skin. So, yeah. Oh, the one thing I didn't try was the biometric functions. And let's go into the health app and see what my health is like. Okay, so I've taken 17 steps. Burned zero calories. Oh, I thought that swiped over to more stuff. I thought it would show me, like, my heart rate and stuff. I know there was a watch face which did that. Oh, heart rate. The Start measuring. BPM per just. Don't know what that measurement is, but 74. And I guess it's about right. Oh, it shows the low and the high. All right. There, I made my heart rate a little lower for you, just so you can see the difference. So yeah, shows the high measurement, low measurement. And let's see if I can make it a little faster. Yep. And there we go, about 10 beats per minute faster than the average. Cool, that seems accurate. I mean, I know it seems like a joke that I can control my heart rate, but I, you know, you, you can go up and down a little bit just by calming yourself down or making yourself excited. 
I don't mean in a weird way. I just mean like, woohoo, sort of excited. So that works. Um, I don't, does it measure SpO2? No, it actually shows a history. And a graph of your heart rate. That's kind of cool. And an option to auto measure. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a simple little app, but like, their little apps seem well made. And quite easily understandable and usable. Now there's a couple of photos in there. Yep, there I am. Cool, cool. So, talk about doing what it says on the tin. I mean, this is exactly what it should be. Which is what's surprising. I thought it was going to be awful. And I apologize to the manufacturer for thinking that. Um, this thing's actually pretty nifty. Now, as far as battery life, who knows? I haven't had it on long enough. It's at 78% battery right now. It started at 98% or thereabouts. Um, but I was installing software and doing a lot of updates and stuff. So it did get fairly warm. I don't think under normal use, it would the battery, the battery level would go down that fast. So battery life might be okay. It might not be. Who knows? That'll be out for uh, the jury to decide. Well, the jury will be me. Maybe I'll try fooling around with this a little more over the next day or two and just see what the battery life is like. I will update that on my website s.co.tt slash whatever I decide. So I guess as a review, I'm supposed to recommend this or not recommend it, and I'm really on the fence. Like I said, whatever they claimed it did on the Banggood listing and on the, on the box, which isn't much, honestly, um, it does. It's a full-fledged smartphone on almost a watch size or I guess wrist computer sized form factor. You need a special term for this. It's not really a watch or a phone. It's somewhere in between. And that could be a good compromise for some people. Like I said, I like it in theory. It's just a little uncomfortable and it looks a little weird, but it's quite functional because it does everything a smartphone does and it actually has a big enough screen to navigate more or less. It might take some getting used to. It has a little few foibles and just like the gesture navigation. You can't really move your fingers enough. And the, like scrolling around and zooming in Google Maps is a little tricky, I'll admit. But I think it's something you could probably get used to if you just sort of got a feel for it on the watch. Um, it played YouTube videos without dropping frames and while scrolling around in the menus in the background. Or in the foreground while the video played in the background. That was kind of impressive. I did not expect it to be able to do that. I thought it would have a really awful processor. And I... I'm sure I saw the specs. I didn't realize it had 4 gigs of RAM, which is, like I said, pretty good for a device like this. Uh, modern high-end smartphones nowadays have 12, 12 gigs of RAM, 8 gig on a fairly high-end phone, and a lot of phones still have 4 or even 2 gigs nowadays. So this is sort of middle of the road as far as that goes. But again, for the size, well, okay, it's a little bit thicker than like a, re a reasonably premium smartphone. This has a case on it, which is thick. Um, this phone is probably about two-thirds the thickness of this watch. But, you know, it's, it's not bad. It's really a nice little design. So, I would recommend it if you're prepared to live with the issues. If you're not, then don't buy it. Um, I'm not chilling for this company, by the way. I bought this with my own money for my own purposes. Uh, nobody asked me to. So, my review is unbiased, even if incompetent in some regards. So take that for what it's worth. Um, if you want a fairly large wrist computer that's a full-fledged smartphone, I guess you can get this one. It's pretty good. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've ah, thanks for watching. <laughs> Puns. Ah. Thanks for watching. I've been Scott, and you can subscribe and like and hit the bell notification icon. Which, as I've said in the video before, don't hit the bell notification icon. I, I really don't want to annoy you every time I post a video where your phone makes a noise at, at you. Uh, I mean, if you want it, that's, that's cool. You know, you do you, but it, like every YouTuber demands that. And it's like, if I hit the bell icon for every YouTuber I subscribe to, I would probably get about 20 notifications a day for new videos. It would get annoying. No offense to other YouTubers. Like, it's just the quantity, not the quality. That's the problem. Yeah. Bell icon is, well, I mean, I guess your top tier subscriptions, the, one you've, the ones you love the most, you can subscribe to if you really want to know when the videos come out, like right away. 
I tend to want to watch YouTube videos when I want to watch them, and then I just go into my subscriptions to see what was new that day. So I don't really need the bell icon. I, I've never pressed it. I don't have it enabled for anyone. And I don't expect you to do that for me either. That would be hypocritical. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you could. I do like and subscribe videos. I do like videos and subscribe to channels or whatever. So, you know, it's not hypocritical for me to ask you to do that. But don't do it if you don't want to. I don't really, you know, I'm not going to twist your arm. As usual, brilliant ending to a video. Bye. I mean, it's really not bad. I can't... My wife is going to make fun of me if I wear this, though. Do I care? I don't really care. I mean, she makes fun of me anyway. So I'll wear the freaking watch. Hmm. Okay, a little bit of an epilogue here. When I went to transfer those photos off the device, I hooked up to my computer, and lo and behold, it does not have a data connection. In fact, it comes up as an unknown USB device descriptor, which is weird, because that means the device isn't even identifying itself in a useful way to the computer. It's a problem at the USB protocol level. So this is really just useful for charging only. Ultimately, to transfer the pictures off, I had to email them to myself by installing Gmail on the little smartwatch dealy phone, whatever. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.